Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. I changed up my intro a little bit. People said, stop saying great, great world because it's not such a great world right now. So that's why I figured I would give it a change. But today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the economy. Are we headed for a recession? On top of that, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about XRP as well. Ripple mentioned in Decentralized Energy System Research plus Smart Cities. This is huge. So they're talking about Internet of Things, fog computing, smart grid, Internet of Energy, electric vehicles, renewable energy sources, decentralized energy. When I first seen this, I said at some point, Ripple and Miota will become partners. They're going to have to anyway, because they're both part of the new financial system. When you think of Internet of Things, you think of IOTA right away. Now you're seeing Ripple tied to this as well. I believe we're going to see the XRP ledger explode in 2023. It's going to be huge. And again, at some point when we get more information on this, I'm going to break this down into one big video because there's so much content here. David Schwartz, exactly. The secret sauce of Ripple is Ripple plus XRP. Every single day, whenever a big announcement comes out around Ripple, people say that only benefits Ripple. It doesn't benefit us as XRP holders. And I stress it all the time. You know, Ripple gets in the door with RippleNet. Eventually, the bank starts utilizing XRP for on-demand liquidity later. Ripple's out there laying out the framework and the plumbing eventually xrp will flow through all those pipes that's what it comes down to the crypto industry is more than one man or personality it's an ecosystem of individuals who fought through the noise and are now working and communicating together you know what's really great about crypto if you're new to crypto you all of a sudden you come in with an investment then you get involved in the community and you start learning things very fast. You start, you know, learning where to put your money, which cryptos are here for the long term. That's what's great about crypto. You learn all through the time you spend in it. And I like the way they broke this down into a movie structure. So season one took place in 2016 to 2018. Takes place in WeWork offices and star lobbyists at Coin Center and the Blockchain Association. Season 2, 2019 to 2021, takes place on the heels of an announcement of Facebook's Libra project and ends with the infamous infrastructure fight. Season 3 was last year, brings a new set of major players and none that's more important than Sam Bankman fried a personality so large that he's only known by his initials. Season 4 is happening right now, 2023, and I believe this is the year, the pivotal year, it's shaping up to be the most memorable yet. With drama in both the speaker's race and crypto policy, the industry is at its lowest point in the show's history, and the damage done by FTX's collapse continues to reverberate. Relationships are tarnished, skeptics are more emboldened than ever, and in some cases, crypto is seen as politically toxic. Divided control of Congress provides opportunities for the industry, but it will take dedicated negotiations, education, and political power to move anything. Fortunately, these are familiar challenges for the industry. Every step in crypto policy is brutal, bruising slog, but that is also what makes the back and forth so fun to watch. I believe 2023 is going to be a massive year for crypto because we're going to see Ripple finally win the lawsuit against the SEC. I believe that's going to spark the next major run up for crypto as well. But on top of that, when regulations come, we're going to see some cryptos disappear. We're also going to see institutions get involved in crypto, enterprise onboarding, FOMO money coming into crypto as well. I believe 2023 is the year crypto does a full 180 and all of a sudden everybody's going to be euphoric around crypto again. The economy works great if you're a billionaire. What about the rest of us? And I feel that there's problems in Washington right now, and this should never happen. Think about it, these politicians come into office, could barely rub two nickels together, and they leave a multimillionaire. Some leave with over a hundred million dollars. How did they get all that money? Most likely, most of that money is tied to corruption. 
Now, the, a recession, a lot of people feel, is on the horizon. The unemployment rate matches a half-century low at 3.5%. Monthly job gains have lately s still been exceeding 200,000. Well, over what's needed to absorb entrance to the labor market. There are still more than 10 million unfilled jobs. At the same time, December marked the fifth straight month decline in temporary help, a segment of the labor market that's first hired in good times and first fired in bad. Hours worked have declined since last February, another sign of easing demand for labor. And some people actually do studies on recessions, a plethora of institutions, including regional Fed banks and Wall Street firms, have poured money and time into developing GDP forecast models. The Bloomberg economics model puts the chance of recession in 2023 at 100%. So U.S. economist Anna Wong says it's likely closer to 80%, given that consumers are still doing comparatively well. How does she feel that, that people are doing well? I know people working two jobs, some working three jobs just to make ends meet. Some people go to work Monday through Friday at their regular job, then on the weekend they're driving for Lyft or Uber. Other people are working under the table just to make it through what's happening right now. And I believe 2023 is also going to be the year we see the U.S. dollar really fall in value. But I believe they want to push us to a cashless society because they don't want people working under the table. They want to make all the money they possibly can in Washington, but they don't want you making any money that you're not paying taxes on. That's why a cashless society is so important to them. They'll collect every tax dollar. But again, things aren't looking good. Biden said he's going to give your tax dollars forever to the Ukraine. Biden says, as I told President Zelensky, today is his, is his birthday, by the way. We're with you for as long as it takes. We need to stop sending money out of this country. People are in very rough shape right now. I can't stress that enough. And again, they want to keep that war going over there because I believe they're still funneling money through the Ukraine as well. Reconstruction in the Ukraine was outsourced to BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager. Zelensky held a conference with its billionaire CEO, Larry Fink, who has coordinated the efforts of all investors. Ukraine has basically been privatized as a country, and they're also working with J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. And that's why I said, I still believe the money is flowing through there and coming back to the U.S. somehow, some way. The people I feel bad for is the Ukrainian people because this guy Zelensky is he's profiting off of this. The people over there are suffering through this. Are we playing right into their plan? How to create a social state by Saul Alasinski? Healthcare, control healthcare and you control the people. Poverty, increase the poverty level as high as possible. Poor people are easier to control and will not fight back if you are providing everything for them to live. Debt, increase the debt to an unsustainable level. That way you are able to increase taxes and this will produce more poverty. Gun control, remove the ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you are able to create a police state. Welfare. Take control of every aspect of their lives, food, housing, and income. Education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what children learn in school. Religion. Remove the belief in God from the government and schools. Class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent. And it will e be easier to take tax the wealthy with the support of the poor. Does any of this sound like it's happening right now? I believe that's exactly what's going on. You know, how can our country, we pay taxes to our government. They know there's homeless people lining up in the streets. They know people are really suffering out there right now. Instead, we're sending them money out of the country. Why not give people a stimulus check? Again, if you're going to spend all this money anyway, why not give it back to the people who pay the taxes? Crypto and blockchain to drive financial expansion in 2023. Like I said, 2023 is going to be huge. Perks of accepting cryptocurrencies. There are several different benefits to allowing Bitcoin payments in online store. 
Here are the four most significant advantages. A cryptocurrency transaction cannot be reversed. Minimal costs are attached to crypto transactions. And it's not only Bitcoin. Other cryptos are starting to be accepted as well. XLM right now is moving money all over the world through MoneyGram and other payment options as well. XRP will most likely be utilized in stores in the future and people will be using crypto on a daily basis and not even knowing it. Bitcoin, in my opinion, next Bitcoin cycle top would be between 90k and 160k. Sideways market, potential temporary bottom, relief rally on Bitcoin to 30 to 35k amongst pause of hikes, inflation coming down, recession and crisis kicks in, one final drop on indice, indi indices. 2024 to 2025 massive bull cycle bitcoin to 250 to 300k now i said it before if the us dollar falls in value bitcoin can actually skyrocket in price as well as the stock market but that's only if the dxy falls if the us dollar falls in value other than that i don't see a major run-up for bitcoin people keep predicting it but what's really going to push the price if we're still sitting where we are right now and the dollar stays strong? Senator Wendy Rogers has introduced a set of bills aimed at making Bitcoin legal tender in Arizona, allowing state agencies to accept Bitcoin. Now, we see them push this around every once in a while. Maybe they're pushing a narrative that you should be buying into Bitcoin. Maybe they want the price of Bitcoin to go up. Who knows? But... Every time they announce this, then later they seem to always walk it back. I never understood that. Even when the government talks about Bitcoin, they only mention Bitcoin because so many people outside of crypto know what Bitcoin is. If you talk to somebody outside of crypto right now about investing in crypto, the first thing they'll say to you, are you talking about Bitcoin? Even though you are talking about XRP or maybe XLM. But I feel that that's how it will get a major run up. But now if something different happens along the way like this, 100% settlement date XRP will flip Bitcoin and then folks will be talking about this unheard of token XRP. I feel if that lawsuit ends and Ripple wins that case, that's going to change things. I believe then XRP will lead the next bull run. And who knows, it may turn into a utility run that lasts for a long time because none of us know how long a utility run will at last and how high the price can go for XRP. They can hate it, ignore it, even try to and undermine it. But they cannot deny it. Utility driven ISO 222 altcoin adoption is inevitable and these projects are at the forefront. Like I said, Ripple wins the case. All of a sudden, institutional money pours in. Banks start utilizing XRP for on-demand liquidity. That can change everything. Ripple protocol consensus algorithm. Three to five second settlement. 1,500 transactions per second. 150 plus validators. When you look at this, right, you see Ripple. My, my whole thinking is that on-demand liquidity is really what's going to push the price of XRP. Everything on top of that is like the gravy. I feel ODL is the potatoes and everything else is the gravy on top of it. But you also see in this mapping where Flare sits. I still believe Flare is going to add a lot of utility to XRP. It's going to add some value to it. Then on top of that, you see the rest, the tokenization, smart contracts. You know, it's just getting started. We are truly early into crypto. And we're getting, we're sitting here watching this get built literally from the ground up. That's what's great about being in crypto right now when we're in it. Exciting times are ahead, in my opinion. That's why I always tell you, stay positive and stay patient. You're going to make it. You're going to get that life-changing money in the future. You know, if Bitcoin does a run-up, sure, it's going to pull the rest of the coins with it. And I hope Bitcoin does do a run-up. There's a lot of retail investors stuck in there that bought much higher than where Bitcoin sits right now. But there's a lot of things that have to happen for Bitcoin to make that run. Like I said, the dollarization is one thing that could possibly do it. Pushing the price of the U.S. dollar down, pushing stocks and Bitcoin up. But 
if Ripple wins that case, Ripple will lead the next run. With that said, I'm going to wrap up today's video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you watching my videos. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.